Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the exact value of a logarithm. Uh, for this one, we are not going to use a calculator. So every one of these can be done without a calculator. Sometimes you will have to have a calculator to solve them, but all of these can be done without a calculator. So what we're going to do is we're looking for seven to what power gives us one. So we're always looking for the exponent on these because remember that this part is the exponent. So we're asking ourselves what would I have to raise seven to to get one? Remember that any number to the zero power is one. So for this one, the answer is just going to be zero because seven to the zero power is one. All right, for the next one, we're trying to figure out five to what power gives us 125. So we're trying to figure out how many times would I multiply five by itself to get 125. So you could rewrite this as five to the third power is one way that you could do it. So you could say that 125 is five to the third power. That means that the question mark has to equal three. So five to the third power is 125 because five times five is 25 and then 25 times five again gives us 125. So those are the two easy ones. The next ones that we're gonna look at are a little more challenging because they deal with negative exponents and um, power exponents. All right, so for this one, we're trying to figure out three to what power is one over 27. Okay, so if you remember, anytime you have a denominator, we could rewrite this as a negative exponent. So we could say that this is 27 to the negative one power. Okay, or you could have rewritten this first and said that 27 is three to the third power, and then you could move the three to the third to the top. Either way, you're gonna end up with three to the negative third power because in order for it to be in the denominator, you do need a negative exponent and three times three is nine, nine times three gives us 27. So the answer to this one would just be negative three. Okay, for this one, since we want one half to what power, so this whole thing to give us eight, so we really have, this is two to the negative question mark and eight is really two to the third power because two times two is four times two gives us eight. So we can say that in this case, our question mark would be negative three. Okay, so in order for a fraction to become a whole number, you do have to take it to a negative value because that gives you the reciprocal. So negative three would be our answer for that one. All right, and then our last one, our last one says that log square root two equals 32. So we're saying square root of two to what power equals 32? So I wanna rewrite it so that they have the same base. 32 is really two to the fifth power because two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, and then 16 times two is 32. So it takes five twos to get to 32. And don't forget that anytime you have a square root that you can rewrite this as a um, fraction exponent. So this is two to the one half power. So basically we would solve the equation one half times, and if you wanted to, you could use an X instead of a question mark. So we would set one half equals five. So I would have to multiply both sides by two, and we would say that this equals 10. Okay, so the square root of two to the 10th power would give us 32. And just to show you why that works that way, um, if you take square root of two to the 10th power, remember that square root of two, we could rewrite this as two to the 10 divided by two power, which gives us two to the fifth, which is 32. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.